Hey, good morning, fourth graders. We are just about ready to jump into chapter two of our Enchantress Returns Land of Stories. Uh, thank you, publishing company Little Brown Books, for letting us do this. And I just want to kind of remind you of where we left off yesterday in chapter one. So we have uh, spent a little bit of time in the Enchanted Forest and in, in the prologue. And then we jump to the present day with Alex and Connor back home, um, kind of explaining things about if their mom knew how long they were gone. Apparently they were gone about two weeks during all of book one. Um, and we've also realized that grandma, there's something going on there. She hasn't returned to this world since... Um, in about a year and now Alex is having dreams about grandma but grandma doesn't recognize her or respond so definitely the author created a little bit of mystery in chapter one now as we go into chapter two maybe we'll get a few answers but I anticipate that we're actually going to pick up more questions more mystery and remember in a story there's always these little sub themes that are going on and that's what keeps us interested so watch for those as I continue reading chapter two here we go. Oh, and I have a little friend with me today that I'm reading to. Say hello, Cooper. Yeah, he keeps pulling on my arm a little bit. So if you see the jiggle, that's Cooper trying to see pictures that don't exist. So Cooper. All right, here we go. So Alex tried doing magic on her own, but it never worked. The only time she had done something magical was when she accidentally set off her grandmother's storybook that transported her and Connor into the land of stories. Do you guys remember that part? Uh, but since it was her grandmother's book, she wondered if she was capable of doing anything alone. Sometimes when Alex was feeling particularly desperate, she would go into the school library and find a random fairy tale treasure. She would hold it against her chest and think of how much she wanted to see the fairy tale world, just like she did the night of her 12th birthday. But it never did anything but attract unwanted attention from the other students. Why is she hugging a book? A popular girl said to her snooty pack on one occasion. Maybe she's taking it to homecoming, another girl said, and they all laughed at Alex's expense. Alex was tempted to yell, hey! My grandmother is Cinderella's fairy godmother, and as soon as she teaches me magic, I'm going to turn you into the lip gloss you wear too much of. But she kept those thoughts to herself. As Alex rode her bike the rest of the way home from the train station, she closed her eyes for a minute and pretended she was riding along Thumbelina's dream in the fairy kingdom. Ah, there was a herd of unicorns to her left and a hovering flock of fairies to her right. She was meeting her grandmother for a magic lesson on how to transform rags into a beautiful ball gown. Paradise, she thought to herself. Alex opened her eyes a second before crashing hard into a, um, a, tra a set of trash cans. Thankfully, the only witness was a garden gnome across the street. But even it seemed to judge her. She got up and brushed herself off, decided to walk her bike the rest of the way home. It had been a brutal reality check. The Baileys still lived in the same rental house with a flat roof and a few windows, but things were looking up for them. Oh, good. Their mother had finally caught up on a lot of their financial troubles and wasn't working nearly as much as she used to. However, something else had been occupying Charlotte Bailey's time recently, and it wasn't nursing. Alex parked her bike on the porch. The front door flew open just as Alex was about to walk through it. Connor was standing on the other side. He seemed upset, very concerned about something. What's your problem? Alex said. Sorry, I thought you were mom, Connor said. Do you need her for something? Alex asked. No, Connor said. Mom's just usually home by six o'clock every night. It's six o'clock right now. Alex said, looking at him like he was some crazy person. It's 615, Alex, Connor said, raising his eyebrows. So? Well, where is she then? Do you see her? Is there a car parked in the driveway? Connor asked. Maybe there's traffic, Alex said. Or something else, he said. Like something keeping her at work. Is there a point to all of this? Alex asked, now becoming annoyed. I've got to show you something, 
Connor finally admitted. But let me warn you, you aren't going to like it. Is this the mystery we've been waiting for? Okay, Alex said and followed her brother in. A series of barks and whimpers came from inside the house as Alex stepped through the front door. Buster! Down, boy! It's just Alex! Connor shouted. Why does this stupid dog act like everyone who comes inside this house is carrying... Oh, and there's my crazy dog, too. Perfect timing. Um, act like everyone is carrying explosives. We live here, too. Are you going to tell me what's going on, Connor? Alex asked, running out of patience. I'll show you. It's in the kitchen, he said. There's been a development. And that actually starts chapter two. Let's see if Cooper's going to let us read chapter two. Of here. He's just going to keep pawing at us and putting his head in the picture. Hello, sweetheart. Yes. All right. It started with a dog. Irony. It's everything, right? A few months ago, Buster and Border, the Border Collie was rescued from the local animal shelter and given to Bailey's family. He was a gift from Dr. Gordon, whom Charlotte worked with at the hospital and who had become a very close family friend. Dr. Bob, as the twins called him, when he occasionally came over for dinner, was a very kind man whose face settled into a natural smile. He was balding and not very tall, but had big carrying eyes that made him an instant friend to anyone he met. Oh, Bob, you shouldn't have, Charlotte said as soon as he surprised them with the canine dog. What's up with the pooch? Connor said when he came to see what the ruckus was about. He's all yours, Bob had said. Your mom's always talking about the border collie she had when she was a little girl. And she said she's always secretly wanted another one. I was volunteering in the animal shelter, and as soon as I saw him, I knew. I just had to adopt him for you guys. We have a dog? Connor exclaimed. Although the words came out of his mouth, he hadn't fully grasped the reality of this. I suppose we do, Charlotte said. Connor immediately fell to the floor and started rolling around with the new pet. We have a dog! We have a dog! he exclaimed and finally our suburban lives are complete thank you dr bob oh you're very welcome bob said what's your name boy connor asked buster bob told him well at least that's what they called him at the shelter the black and white dog was obnoxiously happy and had bright green eyes one of which was larger than the other bob had placed a red bandana around buster's collar Connor hugged him and almost cried tears of joy. I know we've just met, Buster, but I feel like I've loved you my entire life, he said. Who is this? Alex asked when she came to see what was causing all the excitement. This is my dog, Buster, Connor said. He took off one of his socks and he and Buster played tug of war with it. He's for all of you, Bob corrected. Connor don't you use good socks? Charlotte said. Alex unintentionally let out a very high-pitched squeal and her mouth dropped open. We have a dog! She asked and jumped all at the same time. Something about Buster made the twins act like they were 10 again. I think they're 13. Is that right? Yes, we have a dog, Charlotte said and shared the smile. Don't be disappointed if he likes me more, Alex, Connor said, very matter-of-factly. Dogs tend to bond with boys more. It's proven science, I think. Buster, come here, Alex called. And Buster ran straight to Alex's side and happily whimpered up at her. Never mind, Connor said, just a little bit disappointed. The twins were so excited to get a dog, they never questioned the gift for a second. They were so distracted playing with the new addition to their family that they didn't see Charlotte giving Bob a long, thankful hug. An embrace that lasted too long to just be a friendly gesture. But as time went on and the twins saw more of Bob, they were forced to notice the signs that their mother and the doctor might be more than just friends. Connor sat Alex down at the kitchen table as soon as she walked through the door. Although he saw them every single day, Buster just couldn't contain his excitement for the twins both being home. He jumped up and down and spun in circles around the kitchen. 
I bet most of us are having a text to self connection with our own pets there. Bester, calm down, Connor ordered. I swear that dog needs to be on meds. What's going on, Connor? Alex asked. You love that dog as much as he loves you. Yeah, that was before I discovered Buster was a bribe, Connor had animatedly declared. Just take a look at this. Hmm. Ideas? So Connor retrieved a beautiful bouquet of a dozen long-stemmed red roses from the kitchen counter, placed them on the table directly in front of Alex. What could it mean? Those are beautiful. Where are they from? Alex asked. Yeah, they were delivered when I got home from school, Connor said. They're from Mom. From Bob. Alex's eyes also widened. Oh, dear, she said, engulfed. Well, that's very sweet of him. Alex's eyes widened. Oh, dear. Hmm. Sweet? Connor said loudly. This isn't sweet, Alex. It's downright romantic. Connor, you don't know he meant it that way. People send other people flowers all the time. Connor searched through the bouquet. Daisies. Those are friendly. Sunflowers are friendly. Venus flytrap is friendly, but red roses, they only mean romance. And he sent a card. It's in here somewhere. I read it like a hundred times before I threw it back in. Here it is. Read it. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> he passed a small card to his sister, and to her horror, it was heart-shaped. She looked down at it like it had the results to an exam she knew she had flunked. I don't want to read it, Alex said. I don't want to invade mom's privacy. Okay, then I'll read it to you, Connor said, as he uh, tried snatching the card from her hands. Fine, I'll read it, Alex said reluctantly and opened the card. Six months with X's and O's. Alex quickly closed the card as if trying to stop the truth from escaping it. Connor leaned close to his sister and studied her face, waiting for a reaction to surface. Well, Connor said. Well, Alex said, as she ran through a dozen unlikely theories. We don't know that this means they're in a relationship, which of course is written in italics. Connor threw his hands into the air and paced around the kitchen. Alex, don't do that, he said, pointing his fingers at her. Don't do what? she asked. That thing you do when you try to ignore a situation by making light of it. Connor, I think you're overreacting. Face it, Alex, we were blinded by a border collie. Connor exclaimed loud enough for the neighbors to hear him. Mom has a boyfriend. Hearing mom and boyfriend kind of made Alex squirm. In her opinion, the two words just didn't belong in the same dictionary, let alone the same sentence. I'm not going to get too worked up about something until I hear it from mom herself, Alex said. What more proof do you need? Connor said. Mom got a dozen red roses delivered with a heart-shaped card specifying an amount of time. What do you think six months means? Do you think mom and Bob joined a bowling league and didn't tell us about it? Both of their heads abruptly turned in the same direction when they heard the garage door open. Charlotte was home from work. Ask her. Alex mouthed at her brother. You ask her, Connor mouthed back. Charlotte stepped inside a few minutes later. She was still dressed in her blue scrubs from the hospital and carried a bag of groceries. She walked right by the flowers on the table without even noticing them. Hey guys, really sorry I'm late, Charlotte said. I stopped by the store on the way home to pick up something for dinner. I'm starving. I was thinking of making a chicken and rice something or other. Does that sound good? Are you too hungry? Charlotte looked up when the twins stayed silent. What's wrong? She asked. You okay? Wait, where did those flowers come from? They're from your boyfriend, Connor said. In the 13 years of being her children, Alex and Connor could count on one hand how many times they had seen their mother become mm -hmm. speechless. And this was one of those times. Oh, Charlotte looked like a deer in the headlights. You have a lot of explaining to do, Connor said and crossed his arms. You should probably have a seat. 
I'm so sorry. Did someone promote you to parent? Charlotte said and glared at her son. Sorry, Connor said. And then he lowered his head. I just think we need to talk about this. Is it true? Alex asked with a half-concerned, half-horrified expression. Connor slid into a seat next to his sister and Alex's forehead hit the table. Yes, Charlotte said with difficulty. Bob and I have been seeing each other. I was going to tell you, she said. I, I was just waiting. Let me guess, until we're older? Hmm, if only I had a nickel for every time we heard that one. Alex, watch out. We may be two thirds of a set of triple, triplets, but won't know until we're 30. That's an interesting phrase, isn't it? Watch out. We may be two thirds of a set of triplets, but won't know until we're 30. Hmm. Charlotte closed her eyes tightly and let out a deep breath. Actually, I was waiting until I could figure out how to tell you. You guys have been so worried about not seeing your grandmother, I didn't want it to add anything else to your worry plate. She took a seat and let the news sink in for a moment. I know this is really hard to swallow, Charlotte said. Mm -hmm. Hard to swallow? We didn't need an emotional Heimlich, Mom, Connor said. I actually think finding out our grandmother is a fairy in another dimension was easier to process than this. Charlotte's eyes fell sadly to her hands. The twins didn't mean to make her feel bad, but they were feeling so many things. They were forgetting to be considerate. Bob and I have known each other for a very long time. Okay, I'm gonna stop and let Cooper out for a second. Apparently he doesn't wanna hear the rest of the story. Hang on just a second. He's happier, and I think you'll be able to hear the story better now. Okay, so Charlotte's eyes fell sadly to her hands. The twins didn't mean to make her feel bad, but they were feeling so many things, and they forgot to be considerate. So, when your dad died, Bob became a very good friend. He was one of the few people I could talk to about everything that I was going through. Did you know Bob's wife died just a year before your dad died? Oh, both the twins shook their heads. They didn't realize that. You could have talked to us, Connor said. No, I wouldn't, Charlotte said. I needed another adult to confide in. You'll understand one day when you have kids. Bob and I each knew what the other was going through. We talked every day at work and became very close. Recently, that friendship started to grow a little bit. The twins couldn't decide if what she was saying was helping or making things worse. The more she explained, the more real it was becoming. So what about dad? Alex said. <sighs> Your and dad's story was literally a fairy tale, mom. He traveled from a different world to be with you. Don't you still love him? The question was heartbreaking for all of them, but especially for Charlotte. Your father was the love of my life and always will be, Charlotte said. And these years without him, well, they've been the hardest of my entire life. We were married for 12 years. And in that time, we talked about a lot of things, a lot of possibilities. I know for a fact that if I spent another year missing your father, he'd be so disappointed in me. He would want me to move on as much as I would want him to move on if the roles were reversed. That was a promise that we had made to each other. Charlotte went silent for a moment before continuing. The first year after he died, I thought I never would be able to move on, she said. I thought part of me died with him and I would never be able to love anyone again. But then Bob told me he and his wife had made the same kind of promise to each other just before she passed away. And he felt the same way. For some reason, just knowing someone else was in the same boat as me made Everything feels so much better. The twins shared this hopeless glance, knowing there was nothing they could do to ease their mother's heartache. I know this is difficult for you too, Charlotte said, and I'm not saying that you need to be okay with it. You can feel however you want, and rightfully so. Just know 
that Bob makes me really happy. And it's been a long time since I felt this way. Connor unsuccessfully tried keeping a question that popped up in his mind to himself. Connor, what's your question? Charlotte asked and dabbed the corners of her eyes with the edge of her sleeve. I don't have a question, he said and shook his head unconvincingly. Yes, you do, Charlotte said, knowing her son better than he knew himself. You always purse your lips like that when you have something to ask. Connor immediately repositioned his mouth. It's okay, honey. You can ask anything. It's really childish and kind of lame, Connor warned. I guess it's something I've always wondered about people who lose their husbands or wives. But one day, if we're all in, well, we're all in heaven, I guess, isn't it going to be like awkward to have Bob and dad there? Alex was about to let out a disapproving sigh, but held it in. Even she had to admit this was a pretty decent question. Although she felt horrible for feeling it, a part of her felt like her mom was being unfaithful to her dad. Hmm. A smile came to Charlotte's face, though, and she let out a soft laugh. Oh, honey, if there's ever a time or a place when we're all together again, I imagine we'd all be happy to let things be awkward. Alex and Connor looked at each other and knew they were both thinking the same thing. The thought of their family being together again, <gasps> that brought smiles to both of their faces. Charlotte placed her hands on the tops of theirs on the table. Nothing any of us do will ever bring your dad back, she said, and nothing we do will ever push him further away. He'll always be with us in our hearts, no matter what. I guess putting it that way does make me feel better, Connor said. Me too, Alex said. I'm glad to hear it, Charlotte said and smiled at them. She got up from the table, grabbed her car keys. I don't feel like cooking anymore. Let's get pizza instead. It's, a, it's really good to eat something heavy after a heavy conversation. Again, how many of you agree and can do a text to self with that one? All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop um, and we'll jump into chapter three tomorrow. Progressing pretty fast.